Greetings and welcome back to room 303 in our talks with Walt as we are calling our readings through the deathbed edition of Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass. We turn now to the last poem of the drum tap section, To the Leavened Soil They Trod. And I want to just wish you now congratulations. You have made it. You have made it through what really for some of you are reporting has been really difficult reading. Namely, Drum Taps is a very difficult collection of some poems to read. And now we ask a simple question, how will Whitman finish this amazing collection of poems? Well, I don't know. How does he finish the amazing collection of poems that we call Song of Myself? Hey, do you remember this in passage 52 with the spotted hawk that will swoop and accuse me? Do you remember this? I bequeath myself to the dirt to grow from the grass I love. If you want me again, look for me under your boot soles. You'll hardly know who I am or what I mean, but I shall be good health to you nevertheless and filter and fiber your blood. Failing to fetch me at first, keep encouraged. Missing me one place, search another. I stop somewhere waiting for you. Is it at all beautifully ironic that this poem will use the word soil in the very title and first line of a poem that will end now drum taps. Now, I want to remind us that in To the Old Cause, Whitman said it, my book and the war are one. We have taken drum taps and we've looked at it to ask, how does that line resonate? And, of course, the sustained theodicy, uh, that is to say, why did we have to have this horrific war? Whitman writes all of Leaves of Grass to make the argument as to the value of pain and suffering. No longer ask why did this happen to me or to us, but why did this happen for me or for us. Here in this poem to end, we're going to hear about the average earth, and it's going to be compelling the way that he will use that term. Now our assumptions are that you've been following our stuff at LearnStrong.net, down that left-hand side, Talks with Waldar playlist. And you've been with us from that very first word, come, all the way up to and including a set of introductory comments for drum taps. And we just finished with Terno Libertad, and now we are ready for this very last poem. Now, if you've, been, if you've been working with every one of these lectures, then you've been through about, are you ready for this? A little over 250 lectures and, and, and readings. Oh, again, let me congratulate you or pity you, one of the two. Believe it or not, very quickly, we will only have about the same number of lectures, readings left. In other words, we really are in the very heart, the very center of Leaves of Grass. And so we'll ask, how are we going to finish? Well, let's begin with our Nortons, as we are often wont to do. And Nortons will tell us that from its first publication in the sequel of 1865-66, this poem has remained the terminal piece of the Drum Tap series, with its purpose to call the Levin Sod, to attest the poet's songs. For the final 1881 text, the second line, not cities, nor man alone, nor war, nor the dead, was dropped. And the seventh line was revised, not for the better, Norton says, to become the present 11th line. However, the revision does retain the beautiful phrase, the average earth, on which the emotional force of the poem greatly depends. For in a sense, Norton's to finish, in a sense, the diverse culture of this continent was first averaged by the Civil War. Now, I want to point out that the last poems of previous sections, we've mentioned Song of Myself 52, go back and look at all of the major collections and ask, how does he finish at the very end? We've made so many comments about those last poems and the power of those last poems. These um, are always going to be fun, especially the last words. For example, notice as we just read it, the last word of Song of Myself 52 was the word you. The, uh, the, the imagery here is going to be amazing. Walking out of a tent, packing it up, we're coming, it's, it's quite remarkable. Let's just enjoy it. To the leavened soil they trod. Let's remind ourselves, by the way, that the word leavened looks a lot like the word leaves. Of course, it's enlivened as well. That is to say, the fertility that's a part of this. And the word trod will immediately take us to Song of the Open Road, as well as the Calamus section in Paths Untrodden. It's an amazing tour de force, this final poem. Fourteen times we'll get the word to here. To the leavened soil they trod, calling I sing for the last. Forth from my tent emerging for good, loosing, untying the tent ropes. 
In the freshness, the forenoon air, in the far-stretching circuits and vistas again, to peace restored, to the fiery fields, imitative and endless vistas beyond, to the south and the north, to the leavened soil of the general western world to attest my songs, to the Allegheny Hills and the tireless Mississippi, to the rocks, I calling, sing, and all the trees and the woods, to the plains of the poems of heroes, to the prairies spreading wide, to the far-off sea and the unseen winds and the sane, impalpable air. And, responding, they answer all, but not in words. The average earth, the witness of war and peace, acknowledges mutely. The prairie draws me close, as the father to bosom broad the sun, the northern ice and rain that began me nourish me to the end. But the hot sun of the south is to fully ripen my songs. Well, it's such a brilliant poem, and it deserves, I think, its place at the end of Drum Taps. We will, of course, start right away with this idea, the leavened soil, that is to say, the ground out of which everything grows. Think about the ways in which so much of what we've read from our very first word come at the very opening word of Leaves of Grass has been about growth. It's been about dynamism. It's been about learning how to evolve. If there's any reason, and I think there's a number of them, why we want to read Leaves of Grass today, especially today, it's that. The whole idea of leaving, leavened, growing, all of it. Notice it is they, trod, calling, and again, think about how Dante stands behind so much of drum taps, the idea of the walk, the journey through hell, right, and out through the other side. We've given full lectures on the Divine Comedy at LearnStrong.net. To the leavened, earth, uh, leavened soil they trod, calling, again, we're back to the first word in the word come, I sing for the last. In other words, all the way to the bitter end, to the very end, and then it's an interesting word picture, and it works so well with drum taps in parenthetics. Forth from my tent emerging. You'll remember in a site in camp at daybreak. From my tent I emerge here. Forth from my tent emerging for good. It's interesting for good because it can mean like forever, as in I'm done with coming out of a tent. Or it can mean for good, as in as opposed to, to, to a bad. The theodicy, obviously. Loosing, untying the tent ropes. In other words, it's a brilliant construction. And it puts Whitman right there with all of the soldiers who will read this, who themselves, of course, bivy whack and then have to untake, uh, undo the ropes and the tents are broken down. And then he says it, in the freshness, think about uh, the power of some of these words. And, and hear all the, so all the sounds of the F sounds here, for example. In the freshness, the forenoon air, right, this idea of the open air, we've heard it several times, in the far stretching circuits and vistas again to peace restored. Think about his use of the word vistas and things that we're seeing. Remember in Song of Myself 46, we'll go up on a knoll and look at the vista in the Song of the Redwood Tree, number one, the vistas of coming humanity. That idea that there's always this vision, this vista, this vision. Again, to peace restored. This will be his theodicy. For there to be peace, there must first have been war. But that's okay, because we made it through, and we were not destroyed. And then more F sounds. To the fiery fields. We've heard about fiery, right? And all the flickering and fires and all of that. Imitative and the endless vistas beyond this idea of the south and the north capitalized. We're going up, down. To the leavened soil of the general, notice it's capitalized, western world. To attest my songs. And again, this word attest is the theodicy. It proves, the war proves, just how amazing America is. To the Allegheny Hills, of course we're going east, and tireless Mississippi, to the west, all of America is being included. To the rocks, I calling sing. It's, it's brilliant construction in syntax. And all the trees in the woods, we think immediately of Arthur Rowan Walden and his celebration of the trees. To the plains of the Poems of heroes. You'll remember in Song of Myself 18, all overcome heroes, all unknown heroes. You'll remember this. To the prairies spreading wide, 
And, 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 and again, from the mountains to the prairies to the uh, uh, oceans white with foam, God bless America. Obviously, there's so much happening here. It's quite brilliant. To the far off sea and the unseen winds and the same impalpable air. You'll remember this impalpable from Song of Myself 4. And the responding and responding, they answer all, but not in words. It is translinguistic, as we've said. What's truly important about Whitman's theodicy cannot be spoken. As he says it in Song of the Opener, wisdom can't be tested in schools, right? It's of the open air, he'll say. The average earth, and there it is. And think about the power of the word average. It can mean rude, as he's used this word, or normal, or every, everywhere. Ubiquitous is the way he talks about grass. It's everywhere. The average as well is the mathematical equivalent here. In other words, there had to be a lot of death to get to the average. It's compelling use of the word. The witness, think about, I. he'll say it oh, again and again and again. Oh, I see, I look, I am watching, right? The witness of war and peace, think about Tolstoy's classic of 1867, acknowledges mutely. Again, we don't need words. We all know it. America cannot be destroyed because of this war. It's an amazing way to end this set of poems uh, as we finish Drum Towns. The prairie draws me close, and then it's an interesting simile, as the father to bosom broad the son. Back to dirge for two veterans. It's amazing how he just pulls in so many of the father and the son motif, which takes us obviously back to Homer's Iliad, and of course the Odyssey as well, as Virgil's Aeneid. We give it full lectures on all of that at LearnStrong.net if you want to be reviewing that. The northern ice, notice it, we'll get one more time, north-south. The northern ice and rain that began me, nourish me to the end. Again, we're back to leavened with nourish to the end. But the hot sun of the south is to fully ripen my songs. And I mean, we can't help but think of the legacy of, for example, a great writer like Faulkner. And as I lay dying, who will uh, grow out of the work of Leaves of Grass. I don't think you can have a Faulkner without a Whitman. I think it's that compelling, the way that Whitman ends uh, drum taps. Well, how are we going to finish this section of readings at 2A? All the pain, all the suffering of the war was nutriment, right? It was nourishment for future growth. That's how he sees it. That's his theodicy, his, his sustained theodicy. At 2B, notice 14 times the word 2 is used here, suggesting movement and growth, obviously. At 3A, I mentioned Tolstoy's War and Peace of 1867. It is compelling to read drum taps and then turn around and to pick up Tolstoy's War and Peace and read it. I, I, I recommend that you, you spend some time and play that game. Finally, how are we going to own not just this poem, but this entire section as we've been working with it at 3B? So now you have finished drum taps, right? It is some of the most impressive poetry of Leaves of Grass in terms of its imagery, in terms of its uh, messaging. What are your thoughts? How do, you, how do you come down to it? For you, what was the most impressive image? What was for you the most impressive message? Do you have a favorite of all of these? Well, if Leaves of Grass is, as we've argued, and Whitman himself tried to argue, if Leaves of Grass is the New American Bible, and we are into this section uh, that, I, that I said was the lamentation section, then we're going to go to the true heart of the lamentation section with the next section, Memories of President Lincoln. And we're going to begin with lilacs, and maybe some of you will argue, well, that's got to be the greatest poem of Leaves of Grass. We'll, we'll study it, and we'll enjoy it, I hope. Thank you.